Hello class, in this video I'm going to teach you how to use StatCrunch to calculate a test statistic when all you have is a summary of the data. Okay, so this is an example question from homework that was within uh, week three, homework three. And what we have here is essentially an experiment looking at the effectiveness of garlic to lower cholesterol in 63 individuals. Okay, these are not individuals that come from any specific type of population. We're kind of generalizing this to perhaps the world. All right, so cholesterol levels are measured before and after. And essentially our hypothesis is to determine how well does garlic lower levels of LDL cholesterol. And what we're going to assume as part of our hypothesis is that the our claim is that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. And so I've already made the appropriate selection here for what is our null hypothesis and what is our alternative hypothesis, being that if we expect it to not be different than zero, then we say it will be equal to zero. And if we expect it to be greater than zero, then we're going to select the alternate hypothesis that is greater than zero. Okay, moving on. We now have uh, the, the task of being able to calculate the test statistic and the p-value. So what we have within the question is the mean and the standard deviation, as well as the number of people that the experiment was conducted on. So here I've opened up StatCrunch. I'm going to go into Stat, and I'm going to go into T-Stats. Now, I'm going to kind of let you know that I'm choosing to do t-stats here because we don't really have a specific population variance to be able to plug into an, into, uh, an analysis for z-stats, okay? That's the difference here between why you would do a t-stat versus a z-stat. A z-stat is only done when you know something about the population. A t-stat is performed when you don't know that and really all you have is information about the sample, okay? Z-stats are for population, t-stats are for the sample. Now interestingly, when the number of participants in a study gets large enough, the z-stats and the t-stats output will essentially be the same. And I'll get into a little bit about why that is after we perform the analysis. So this is t-stats. And this is going to be one sample, not paired. It's one sample because we set our claim to a specific value for zero. If we were looking at just uh, something else as far as uh, we didn't have this type of hypothesis, then it would be between two samples, or then it would be paired, sorry. So, and also you don't have the option of being able to put in the summary for a paired test Whereas for one sample, we can go to the next tab over and we can go with summary. That's the option we want for this exam, for this question here. So it's going to ask us what's the sample mean. It's point one. What is the standard deviation of the sample? Okay, that's important here. 2.14. And what is the total sample size? 64. What's our hypothesis test? This is also very important. This is going to determine the size of our p-value. Uh, HA is, this, is the same as H1, and we know that correctly uh, our claim is that the mean is greater than zero, so I'm going to change that here to the mean is greater than zero. For your question, it may be different, so don't just copy what I'm doing. And then I'm going to hit compute. And here, when I've computed I, uh, my t-statistic, my uh, my statistics here, I get the output of uh, what the mean was, which I already know, the degrees of freedom, which was the number of individuals minus one uh, for this particular test. And then I have my t-stat, which is the test statistic here. And the question is asking me to round to two decimal places. I see here that uh, when I look at 373, that the test statistic is going to stay at 0.37, which is what I put in here, which is correct. The next question is to determine the p-value. When I look at the p-value here, it's asking me to round the three decimal places, 0.3549. So I'm going to round this to 0.355, and that is also correct. Okay, so I'm going to quickly get into exactly uh, why we're going to be doing uh, hypothesis testing 
uh, of this type of question with this type of data with a T statistic versus a Z statistic. So here, if you look at this table here, deciding between a Z test and a T test, our sample size is when it's greater than 30. Uh, if that is the case, then we can actually do a Z test or a T test. And I'll show you quickly here in StatCrunch again. All right, so this time I'm going to go to Z stats, one sample with summary. I'm going to put in the same thing that I did in the previous question. 64. I'm going to change my hypothesis and I'm going to compute. And as you can see here, here is the Z summary, here is the T summary. They are essentially the same, same standard error. It doesn't give me degrees of freedom because it calculates that a little bit differently. The Z stat is uh, identical to that of the T stat, but you can see that the P value varies ever so slightly here. And this is where it may be important to be able to make sure you're doing the appropriate test for the question. Because as you see, it has to round to three decimal places. If I had used the Z stat, I would have used 0.354 instead of 355, and it would may have given me the uh, labeled that as incorrect. It does give you a little bit of error, room, a little bit of wiggle room uh, in the question, but nevertheless, if we were using a smaller sample size, then these things would have actually differed uh, quite considerably and you would have been much farther off and probably been made incorrect and kind of confused about why this isn't working. So why is that? Now, not to get into too much kind of complicated things about why these things are similar when the number of subjects is greater, is larger versus lesser, but essentially what it comes down to is that the T distribution, which is these curves here, the, the red and the green curve, is going to change in kind of height and width depending on the overall sample size, or the N. A Z distribution is always going to stay the same because we're assuming it based off of a population. The T distribution is going to change based off of the N. Now what you'll notice here is that as the n increases, so the green is smaller than 30 and the t is greater than 30, the t distribution is going to start looking more and more similar to the z distribution. This is why, essentially, that as you get to larger and larger numbers on n for the t distribution, you're going to get results that are remarkably, if not completely similar to the z distribution. However, this is where you run into trouble when you run a Z test that's supposed to be a T test on a sample size that is less than 30, where now your overall test statistic and your Z and your P value are going to be very different from one another. So that's something that you're going to have to look out for. Okay, hopefully that covers everything about what you may run into when it comes to this homework and which test to use and how to calculate it through StackCrunch. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to help you. Okay. Bye-bye.